Whoa, Bessie. Hey, DIYers. Some of you might get this reference, but for those of you that don't, back in the old West days, and no, I wasn't there then, smart ass, they would use divining rods, merely sticks, to find water. We're gonna do something a lot more sophisticated and more accurate today than the old stick method. So I've got an in-ground sprinkler system at my house, which is very nice to water the yard here in hot old Texas heat. But the problem is, is this is one valve. I've got a four zone system, which means I got four valves. Well, two are located under here. The other two, I have no idea where they are. And actually when I moved into this house, this one wasn't even able to be found. Found this because when I turned it on, there was this geyser of water coming up because there was a leak. And under the dirt and the mud, well, there it was. But I can't find the other one. Now I've made some feeble attempts at it. I know when I had to fix this, the wiring runs that direction for the other valves. And I've kind of taken a stick and tried to poke around and try to find it, but I didn't find it. And the old divining rod method isn't gonna work. Now the reason this is important, well, two reasons. One, the other two valves go bad. It'd be nice to know where they are. Two, I've got a project coming up. I might need to know where that valve is. So come on, let me show you what I'm gonna use. So here's the controller for my sprinkler system. And what I'm gonna use is a little device called the Chatterbox. Now I got this off of Amazon and I'll leave a link in case you decide you need to get one to do the same at your house. Now they do make big systems that you can rent. If you can find a place that actually rents one, you can rent a system to find your sprinkler valves. It's a little more sophisticated than this. The rental cost will probably cost you about what the cost for this. I think this cost me with shipping everything like 63 bucks. How this works is, is to take this cover off, labeled one, two, three, and four. It says right on here, controller valve. So what you'll do is put the controller clip on the screw here and the valve clip on the wire. Solenoid on the valve makes a bunch of noise and you're supposed to be able to go out there and hear it underground. So that's what we're gonna do. But I'm gonna test it out on the two that I already know where they are. See how it works first. Okay, so I know this valve box is for zones three and four. And I know that for a couple of reasons. One's because of where it's at and two, I've done some investigation and I'll show you. So basically what they have in my situation that yours may be different, one long continuous wire that comes from the garage, runs to here and runs off to the other set of valves. And what they did is they pulled it up, stripped the wire off of a section, cut the orange in half and the red in half and the white in half. White is the common wire, your power wire. So these two reds, one comes off of each valve, runs into this waterproof wire nut and where they cut the whites, they fed it in there so that gives power. Then the other red wire on each valve runs to the corresponding valve. And so basically same thing. They just took the red wire from each pump and connected it to each valve. The rest of these wires here, they just fold it over, twist, and they run off to the other valve. So now that I know that, we'll go get started. Now, before you do any Thing, anything. You need to shut the water off to your sprinkler because if this thing is turning the solenoid on and off, it's going to cause your sprinklers to go up and down, up and down, up and down, and you don't want that. Everybody's is going to be different. Mine, the shut off is right here. So now let's go hook up that chatterbox. Four is orange and red is three. So this is very low voltage. You ain't going to worry about getting electrocuted. You just need a Phillips screwdriver. But anyhow, we're going to take a Phillips screwdriver and unscrew the screw to number four and pull it out. It tells you controller valve. So valve is going to be this wire here. The controller is going to be here. I'll hook it onto the screw. It has a little light that should light up when it's on. Let me turn this to one station. There, come on. So my valve four is on. So let's go out and listen for the chat. Now, I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear it clicking from here. Can you hear that? Put your hand on the valve. You can feel it vibrating. So this is number four. So now let's go find valves one and two. I have to say that worked really slick. I did have my doubts. Same thing. So I took the screw loose for valve number two, which is blue. The valve is the loose wire. Controller is the screw. Now I have to do is change mine to manual one station, put it to number two, turn it back, and that's on. I got 15 minutes. So let's go outside and listen for the chatter. Here's where valve three and four are. I'm guessing it's right over in there, but we'll see. I think I hear it down here. Well, what do you know? I think it's out in the front yard. Right there it is. This whole time was in the front yard. This whole time was in the front yard, right by my flower bed. When I did that flower bed, I had no idea. I'm gonna tell you right now, I had serious doubts. This thing works slick. I mean, this was the best $63 you could spend to do this. And when I stick my finger through here, there's the lid. So let me get a shovel and uncover this. All right, I used a stick to mark where it's at. And let's see. Oh, 
I'll be done. And here it is in all its glory. And this is the problem. It's way too low below grade. And the grass grew over it. That is way too small a box. Now that was so easy. It took me all of about 10 minutes. You could teach a fifth grader how to do this. It was so easy. But let me tell you, I was very skeptical when I did this. I thought for sure I was wasting $63 on this little piece of equipment here. But man, this thing surprised me. It works wonderful. And this isn't sponsored by the way, but if you have an in-ground sprinkler system and you can't find your valve boxes, pick one of these up. I'll leave a link for it and you'll find them in no time. Very, very easy. So don't be afraid to get out there and DIY some stuff. And if you like these simple little DIY projects like this, click on this playlist here where I got a whole list of these that I've done and any of you should be able to do. So get out there and DIY a few things. And until next time, happy DIYing.